Good morning, students. I wonder whether you can hear me now. Good morning, Victor. Yes, we hear you. Okay. Today we are going to have a new chapter that is chapter eight on page 50. So what I want you just to open your book and follow. Chapter eight is entitled Teaching Listening. Goals and techniques for teaching listening. Listening is the language modality that is used most frequently. Okay, what does this mean? Here, when we are talking about listening, we are talking about modeling. What do you mean by modeling? That is, there must be a sample to follow. With listening, we need just to have a sample because we are going to be the recipient or the receiver or we are not responsible for the message. Somebody or, let me say, the source itself will be the model for listening. Okay. How can we define listening? It means paying attention to and understanding what you hear. This is very important. This is just to tell you the difference between listening and hearing. If, if I want just to say, listen and hear, what is the difference? With listening, we have paying attention, and this is very important. It means that we are not having something just to hear and that's it. We need to focus and concentrate to understand what is said. So this is the meaning of listening. So with listening, we have paying attention, aiming to understand. It is as an essential skill for communication. This is very important. Okay. Now, what is the uh, relationship between listening and communication? Of course, if you remember, when we talk about communication, we said that we have to have a speaker and a listener. So here, with listening, communication is achieved when somebody is having uh, the ability to understand what is said. So this is what, what is going on with listening. So it is essential. What does it mean? It means that without listening, we cannot achieve communication. Teachers and students often underrate the importance of listening because the mo more obvious goal of language course, okay, to learn how to speak the language, okay. This is just to tell you that listening is a neglected skill. Once again, listening uh, is a neglected skill. What does it mean? Teachers and students do not think that listening is very important. And this is something wrong. They are saying that the most important thing is just to know how to speak. Okay. So here, this means that they are not having uh, certain exercises to train listening. So here, when we are talking about listening, we need just to train ourselves just to be good listeners first. And with this, you have to know that uh, the first thing just to acquire language, just to listen, not to speak. We are first listeners and then we are having the ability to speak. So here, we, when we are talking about the most, uh, 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 let me say, uh, uh, important goal, for learning a language is not only just to speak, no. We have to train ourselves just to be good listeners in order just to, to, to have the ability to speak. Without listening, we cannot speak. How can we recognize language? So we have to recognize language first by listening, by using listening skill, and then we are going to be able to be a good speaker. Up to this point, is it clear? Any question? Yes, it is clear. 
Okay, if I ask you in the exam, listening is a neglected skill. How can you respond? How can you comment? You are yes, going to say. Yes, you are going to say. Yes, please. Uh, doctor, uh, the listening is uh, is not a secondary skill. It's essential skill. So it's yeah, uh, very good. Uh, and it should yeah. not neglect it because it's yeah. the most important skill in any language. Very good. You see, you see, if if you say why, because here, how can we acquire language? We acquire language first by listening. By and listening, this is very important. Yes, we yeah. are not going to speak. Uh, how? I mean. Start, start, uh, I mean, starting the starting point begins with listening. Okay, we cannot acquire language by speaking. We cannot speak unless we listen. We recognize words. We uh, recognize vocabulary. We recognize the structure, and then we are going to speak. And that's why we need just to have certain exercise to what to train listening skills. And this is what we miss. This is what we are, uh, I mean, uh, having the idea to what to, to emphasize. We need to emphasize that listening should be developed. We have to develop listening skill by having certain exercise to train. So if we say that it is a neglected uh, uh, skill because Students and teachers think that the most important thing from learning uh, language is just what? To know how to speak. Of course, we need just to speak. But how can we speak without uh, having the idea about listening? We cannot speak well unless we listen well. Okay. However, you cannot converse with someone without understanding what you hear. Oh, okay, this is very important also. Okay, how can I speak if I cannot understand what you said? I have to listen to you well, and then I'm going to, uh, to respond. So you see now the relationship? Now, here, this is the relationship between listening and speaking. I cannot speak unless I understand what is said, because here, Speaking cannot be done alone. It means that there must be somebody just to be a listener and the other will be a speaker. So if I want just to speak, I have to listen first to what is said and then I'm going to respond. If, uh, if I'm not understanding what is said, how can I speak? How can I react? How can I respond? Get the point now? So here, this is just to draw the relationship between listening and speaking. Listening and speaking are coming together. They are, they are to be done together. So we cannot, we cannot speak unless we speak, uh, unless we listen, sorry. With the speaking, we need to understand what is said and then to respond. We cannot speak in the vacuum. We have to listen first and then we, we have to understand what is said, and then we are going to react. So this is, if I ask you, what is the relationship between listening and speaking? They are interrelated. We cannot speak without listening. And with listening, we need to understand, and then we are going to react. Clear? Yes. OK. Listening is in some ways more difficult than speaking, okay? If I ask you, comment. Okay, I'm going to repeat. Listening is in some ways more difficult than speaking. Well, some yes, doctor. believe, they, 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 uh, some believe doctor. that speaking is more, doctor. yes, yes, please, yes. Any yes. problem? Any yes. problem? No, I want. No, I'm. I I'm not asking you just to respond. Yes, I'm not asking you just to respond because I, I'm. I'm going to explain. Uh, if if you want just to comment, okay, just wait because I want just to finish with this point. Well, some believe that speaking is more uh, difficult than listening, but in fact, listening is more difficult and you say in some ways what does it mean in some ways does it mean that it, it will be in, in in all cases 
we are going to explain why. Okay. What to say in some cases or in some ways more difficult. After all, you can control what you say. You cannot normally control what is said to you. This is the response. Why do we think that listening is more difficult than uh, speaking? We are going to say we can control what we are going to speak. But how can, how can we control uh, what is said? Because the, uh, what is said is to be done by somebody else. How can I control what is said? It is difficult. So if, if we are going to say why it is uh, difficult, because here the, the control of language is not related to the listener. The control, the control would be by the source. Okay. Now, when, I, when I'm saying that uh, listening or listener, it doesn't mean that you are going to listen to somebody. Maybe you are listening to the radio, TV, uh, you see? So here, the source will not be uh, a person all the time. Maybe uh, something, you see, uh, uh, not related to, to people. We, we are listening to radio. So when you listen here, you are not having the full control of what is to be said. Okay, so what does it mean? You are going to control, if you want just to understand, you are going to have your abilities to be restricted totally in, in, in full with the time that the speech is done. You are going to focus more and more to understand. So this is, this is difficult because it needs some sort of concentration all the time. And sometimes... Uh, something to be said quickly. Now, um, if I ask you now, if, when, when you are uh, watching, um, you see, a movie in English, you cannot uh, grasp or understand every word, every expression to, 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 be, to be said in the movie. Because it is difficult. Some, sometimes it is, it is related to the, to the speed of language, okay? If it is to be said quickly, you cannot understand every word, every, uh, every uh, let me say, expression to be said. And sometimes you look in, uh, down in the uh, translation to, to, uh, to check. Sometimes the words or the expressions that are to be said will be reduced, you know, reduced. We have some sort of elision, if you remember these things in uh, pronunciation or, let me say, phonetics. We have elision. I, I don't know whether you have a, an idea about elision and uh, assimilation, uh, things that are related to uh, the way that we are going to join uh, uh, sounds together. Got the point now? So instead of saying goodbye, you say goodbye. Okay. So uh, sometimes, sometimes you you listen to, to to certain expressions, but you don't know that it is reduced. Now, if I if I'm going to give you an example, if you are uh, listening to somebody say try like just like this. Did you understand what is it? What is it? Three ala Canadian. Three ala Canadian. You don't know what does it mean. But here it is said quickly. And if, if I say it slowly, it will be treat her like a lady. Is it okay? Yes. So what does it mean? Sometimes we have some sort of reduction. Reduction, you know reduction? I mean, words will not be said uh, as it is to be singly. Okay? Okay? So instead of, of saying particularly, I'm going to say particularly. And instead of saying usually, I'm going to say usually. And instead of saying, for example, history, I'm saying history. So with these things, you have to know when, when you are going to uh, listen, sometimes you cannot uh, control everything. Things will be reduced, things will be, uh, let me say, assimilated, just like these things. 
And why we are saying in some ways, and this is very important, by the way, we say in some ways, what does it mean? Here, when, when we are saying in some ways, what does it mean? It means that it is related. It is related to your level of language. What does it mean, your level? If you are acquainted, familiar with things that you listen and you can you can control it would be okay so it it is related to your level and when i say in some ways because uh, people here will will vary will not be in the same level and it is again related to your way to train your listening ability Remember, when we are talking about skills, when we say skills and listening is one of the skills, skills are just like things that are related to sports. You know sports? When we are talking about skills, skills need training. Just like, uh, let me say, a football player, okay? When we are talking about this, okay, if, if, uh, if the football player is well-trained, it will be... Uh, I mean, better uh, just to have, uh, let me say, a match rather than others who are not trained. So here, listening skill needs training. So if you are if you are uh, a good trainer, it means that you can you can uh, control things that are said. Uh, uh, I mean, easily or things that are said quickly. You can you can uh, understand it. So we are saying in some ways because here learners vary in their own levels of uh, uh, listening ability. Got the point now? Why to say in some ways? Any question about this? Please. Any question? Students? No, doctor, no. Okay. <laughs> Successful listening depends on your ability to understand sounds in particular context and circumstance. Okay. This is very important. Why? Because with listening, first of all, you have to concentrate on the sounds that are to be said. Here, you are not going to, to look at language, uh, I, I, I mean, in full, unless you recognize now when when you are listening to certain, uh, I mean, sounds in other languages, okay, uh, you cannot, you cannot uh, begin with the with the meaning rather than just to recognize is is this is this Arabic is this English is this another language, okay? So somebody somebody is saying como stai. If you are if you are listening to the sounds first. You cannot recognize that this is Arabic. You cannot recognize that this is English. But what is it? If you are listening to somebody who is saying, Como stai? What is it? This is Italian. Which means, how are you? So, first of all, you, you, you should pay attention to the sounds to recognize which language to, to be said. And then you are going to go to the meaning. So here we are concentrating on the sounds to be said. Of course, if somebody is talking in Arabic, you can recognize that he's speaking Arabic. And then the other was speaking Spanish, for example. Other was speaking German. Okay. So with these things, you have to consider sounds because sounds are the, 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 the system of the spoken language. First of all, you recognize which language to be said through the sounds. Then, what do we have? The setting or social situation. The listening context plays an important role in helping us to work out the meaning and interpret what we hear. Okay, so here, what do we have? We have stages, you know stages? First of all, we recognize the sounds, and then 
we have to relate what is said to the situation and the social context and this is very important first of all we recognize which language to be said and then we are going to relate these things with the with the situation with the context why to understand the meaning to understand the meaning okay what to say what to say the situation because here language is not in the vacuum you have to know that we have linguistic and paralinguistic factors that are related to us to language and we we want just to understand unless we understand the situation we cannot understand what is what is to be said suppose that you are listening to uh, words okay uh, and uh, you, you have to be with the situation and to, to understand okay i'm going to give you an example suppose that you are listening to two people who are saying uh, only words ready coming Okay, unless you, ha you, you have an idea about the situation in order just to say that somebody is asking the other, are you ready to what? To come and say, okay, I'm coming. Okay, in this case, unless you, you will be in the situation itself, you cannot understand what is going on, who is speaking and who is, who, uh, who is responding. So in this the case, that yes. they are uh, talking about uh -huh. the situation. So this, uh, the situation will help you to understand the meaning. So first of all, you recognize the language. Uh, you see, this is stage number one. Stage number two, you have to consider meaning. This is when you understand the situation. Clear? So you have stage number one and stage number two. Recognizing uh what what sounds to be said and then going to the meaning through understanding the situation itself this is what we call the listening context okay the listening context determines the listening strategy this is very very important if i ask you in the exam the listening context determines the listening strategy commands what does this mean? Now, you have to know that uh, uh, the context itself, the situation you are in, uh, will not be the same. Do you think that when you listen to a lecture is 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 the same when you uh, when you are listening to, uh, uh, for example, uh, a program in, in on TV? Of course, it is. It, it is uh, what well, it is different. Here, what differs? The situation itself. You are the same listener, but here the situation will be different because your listening strategy will be different. When you are listening to the teacher, you, you want just to understand everything because you, you feel that they are very important and they are coming in the exam. But when you are listening to a program, for example, on TV, you, this is for enjoyment. You are not, uh, I mean, you are not forcing yourself to understand everything. You, you, uh, you listen to what you like. You got the point now or not? Yes. Yes, yes. sir. Is it clear or shall I, sh shall I repeat what I said? Victor, can you repeat this? Yes. Your listening context is related to your listening strategy what does it mean you have your own strategy depending on the situation if you are listening to a lecture just like now will be different when you are listening to what to a program on tv because the aim of listening will be different uh, listening to a lecture will be uh, for you is more important than listening to a program because here you are thinking of other things rather than uh, uh, I mean of, uh, enjoyment here with, with listening to a program you have only enjoyment you are going to decide what to listen and what to leave but with, with listening to a lecture no you are going to concentrate uh, 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 through the use of listening skill from the beginning till the end 
because you feel that they are very important and the, the, the aim will be different. Clear, Abdullah, or not? Just tell me now. Just clear, clear. Oh. Okay. Now, uh, the way we listen, therefore, varies according to our listening purpose. This is what I said. Your aim to listen to a lecture will be different from uh, your aim to listen to a program. It has been estimated that adults spend almost half their communication time listening and students may receive as much as 90% of their in-school information through listening to teachers to one uh, and to one another. So what does it mean here? Now, you see now, uh, uh, we spend uh, approximately 25 minutes, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, I mean, the listening, uh, I mean, uh, time will be related to you. You see, uh, you are not speaking now. You are listening to me. You see now, you spend, you spend uh, I mean, the, the time consumed for listening. You see now? So if we check uh, the time that you listen, and uh, with the time that you speak, it will be very, very little when you say that the time of speaking. It cannot be much, you see now. So the percentage of listening will be higher. Often, however, language learners do not recognize the level of effort that goes into developing listening ability. So what does it mean here? You have to know that you are uh, uh, developing your listening ability automatically. What does it mean? It means that you are not uh, intending just to say that uh, uh, the way that you listen will be better today or, uh, or tomorrow. No, you are going to do it automatically without considering that you are doing the listening activity. This is one. Second, uh, yes, yes. You are going you are going to develop yourself effortless. Uh -huh. You see, so the idea here, the idea here, since uh, listening is passive, what does it mean? You do nothing. You do nothing, I mean, uh, uh, practically. But of course, mentally, you are uh, uh, focusing, concentrating, and this is, uh, this is to be done automatically if you have the intention to do it. The other point now? Yes, so here we yes. don't have something related to uh, what you practice. Uh, still, uh, listening is what? A passive skill. It is not uh, a productive skill. You are just now listening to me. You are doing nothing, only just to listen. This is what practically. But mentally, the cases will be different. Okay. For, yes. Yes, Abdullah, you have something? Yes, but it's done by unconsciously. Unconsciously, yes. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yes. Uh, far from passively receiving and re uh, recording oral input, listeners actively involve themselves in the interpretation of uh, uh, what, what, what they hear. Okay? Yes. This is, again, a very important point. Here, you, you have a keyword. This is what we call interpretation. Interpretation. You know interpretation? The way that you explain. Here. Now, we have another stage. Okay, you listen. Then, you want just to check. And this is very important. Did you understand what you said? What, what, what is said, sorry? What is said? So here, you are going to have another process to do. That is what? To explain what you listen. This will be what? Will be not the same uh, for all listeners. You are going to explain what you understand, but this will be different from others. What does it mean? It means that uh, listeners will vary with their own ability to, uh, to understand and to explain what they understood. So, 
uh, you may you may uh, find some people who are arguing who say well uh, it is said so and so they say no this is not what what is what is to be uh, said no uh, I mean the aim will be different or what is what is what is mentioned is something uh, different so here there is some sort of argument among among what among listeners because they vary their own ability to understand. So here we have another process. That is what you you listened, you received, but you see, you try in your in in, in your mind just to what to recognize what what is said and to understand it. This is another stage. That is what understanding. So the the, the case here, uh, we need just to what to train in order just to what to have some sort of what of uh, development in the way that we understand the more that we uh, we train in listening the the better uh, will be our understanding so of course listeners will vary their own way on interpretation of what is said bringing their own background knowledge and linguistic knowledge to be, uh, to bear on the information contained in the oral text ah, this is very important you see here you are while you are listening you are activating your uh, knowledge background what does it mean as we said that can this you the question body, sorry can you read the question yeah it's not a question i'm i'm explaining now here as we said that listeners will vary in their own ability to, to listen what does it mean their language background will, will be different what does it mean suppose that we have two people who are listening to what is said in the movie one is having a good vocabulary and the other is have uh, is having what uh, very little and limited vocabulary the first one will understand more because his language uh, background will be will be what will be de more developed uh, rather than the second one so here while you are listening you are using your language background and that's why if i if i'm going to give you an example some students when when the, the lecture will be totally in english they cannot understand some some of you now okay and they may ask, okay, why not just to uh, to have uh, some some uh, explanation in Arabic? What does it mean? It means their language background in English is bad, or it is not developed, and that's why they are n uh, they are not understanding what is totally said in English. They need Arabic. So what does it mean? It means that they need to develop their own ability, their language background, because they cannot understand every word, because they don't have the meaning in, uh, of these vocabulary to be said by the teacher, uh, uh, and they can recognize, and then they are, they are going to understand. And this is this is something related to them, not to the teacher. So here when we are saying that we are using language background what does it mean uh, again there is some sort of variation here uh, uh, listeners will will vary and they are using their language background to understand and each one will have uh, th their vocabulary store and they can recognize easily if they have good vocabulary store because they are listening to to the words that are said by others not all listening is the same this is very important so we have two types of listening we have casual listening this is number one casual casual listening and then we have intended listening what is the difference we have casual listening and we have intended listening. Casual listening, it happens uh, without, without having the purpose to, to listen. Suppose that you are moving 
you are moving in a street and while you are moving you are uh, listening to uh, uh, two people who are talking this is casual this is not intended you are not aiming uh, to, to listen but it comes because you cannot close your your ears i mean words will be will, will be heard and you are going to listen whether you, you like it or not whether you you, you have the, the the intention or not this is what is called casual casual intended the, the the case will be different because you are going directly and intentionally to something to be said within the time that you prepare now you are coming now to the lecture in a definite time to listen to the teacher this is what we call intended clear or not just tell me yes, can you repeat yes casual listening is to be done unintentionally aimlessly while intended listening needs a preparation and a purpose to listen this is the difference between intended listening and casual listening casual listening you cannot you cannot uh, i mean uh, um, uh, prevent it because it happens can you close the mouth of of all people wh while you are going here and there no because people are are, are uh, let me say are speaking all the time so you are going to listen uh, wh whether you like it or not but when you are going to a lecture and this is your own aim to have a lecture this is something different that that is you are intending just to have the things that are to be said by the teacher Clear or not, just tell me now. Clear, clear. Yes. Well, not all listening is the same. Casual greetings, for example, require a different sort of listening capability than do academic lectures. Language learning requires intentional listening that, that uh, employs, by the way, when you say intentional listening or intended listening, the same. Uh, strategies for identifying sounds and making meanings for them by the way i'm reading on page 51 now the second paragraph listening involves a sender a person radio or uh, television a message and a receiver okay what are the elements of listening activity what are the elements we have a sender a message and a receiver a sender will not be always uh, people just just like the uh, the examples that we have in the book audio television okay and the receiver let us know of course uh, so here when we are talking about these elements listening cannot happen without these three elements we cannot uh, imagine that we have listening without these uh, three uh, I mean important elements listeners often uh, uh, must process messages as they come even if they are still uh, processing what they have just here this is very important I'm going to repeat this point listeners often must process message as they come even if they are still processing what they have just here here what does this mean it means that a listening process is something okay uh, not to be uh, having uh, some sort of stops no you are trying to understand why your listening is going on listening is going on okay so here when we are talking about this 
you listen okay while you are listening automatically you are trying to understand even if listening is going on what does it mean you are not going to stop it and then you are going to have a listen part, uh, to, to part one and then we are going to uh, to part two no you are trying to listen while listening is going on you are you are trying to listen and understand okay and then when, when we are talking about this we are talking about uh, understanding within listening process so you are not going to uh, i mean to uh, uh, I mean, wait till listening is ended, and then we are going to say that you understand. No, understanding is going on while listening is going on. So these processes are done together, simultaneously, at the same time. You listen, you are, you are trying to understand, and you are, uh, uh, I mean, continuing listening also. So you are uh, listening and understanding, and then you are listening also, you see, doing these things all together. Without backtracking, you see now, without back, you know backtracking, that is, you are going to repeat what is what is to be said, because you see now, Sometimes you are listening live, just like now. Unless you understand, uh, unless you understand these things, uh, I mean, while listening is going on, or you are going to ask somebody who is speaking. In this case, what does it mean? It means that you lost something, and you need these things just to be what to be said once more, and that that is what we call backtracking or looking ahead. So here, listening is going on, and understanding is going on also. In addition, listeners must cope with the standard choice of vocabulary, structure, and rate of delivery. This is very important. What does it mean? It means that you are not going to make the listener, oh, sorry, the speaker, choosing the, the vocabulary that you know. You listen, whether the vocabulary that you know or not. So here, the the decision of 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 uh, of the of, of the speech to be said, uh, not by you, by the speaker. So you are here. You are, uh, uh, I mean, forced to be familiar with the vocabulary that that is said by others. So in this case, you are not responsible to decide which vocabulary to be said and to be listened. No, this is the responsibility of the speaker. The speaker is having the full, uh, uh, I mean, uh, responsibility and the full ability uh, or the full choice of uh, to choose the vocabulary that he wants us to say. Okay, and then you are going to listen, whether you can understand it or not, because this is not your own choice. The complexity of the listening process is magnified in second language uh, context where listening process, uh, sorry, where this uh, receiver also have incomplete control of language. Okay. So here, this is just to compare between things that are to be said in the native language and things to be said in the what? In the target language. What does it mean? It means it is not, I mean, uh, uh, it is not difficult for you if, uh, uh, I mean, you are listening to one who is speaking in the native language, you, uh, your native language is Arabic, and the other is talking in Arabic. Okay, so uh, the, the vocabulary to be said, the, the, the structure to be said, it's, it's, uh, it's okay. Uh, of course, it is not your own choice, but you can, you can do it in one way or another. But the difficulty now, when you are having incomplete uh, knowledge or command of the language uh, and then you are going to listen to vocabulary that you don't know. So the difficulty occurs 
when you listen to vocabulary and words that you don't know in the target language because you have incomplete control of the target language. Whether the case will be easier when you listen to the native language. Clear? Clear? So if I ask you in the exam, yeah. the complexity of the listening process is magnified in second language context where the receiver also has incomplete control of language and say discuss or comment. What you are going to say? You are going to say that the difficulty happens when... Yes, doctor. When, yes. Yes, Abdul. Yes, doctor. Uh, the students they are still learning, so they must uh, uh, they must listening, even though there is an uh, incomplete knowledge of their language. Uh, uh, so here, this is difficult. This yes, is a doctor. difficulty. You know why? But, because you cannot you cannot understand everything, because still but, uh, you don't uh, have the, co the, 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 the command or the control or full control of language itself. You don't know all the vocabulary in English, for example. Yes, but you, you, see, you, you are going to listen in one way or another, in one way or another, okay? You are going yeah. to listen. But uh, w when you are going to listen to somebody who is speaking the native language, of course, uh, uh, say, I mean, here, when you are going to compare, the, the case will be different and it will be easier. This is the idea. Yes, Dr. Nevertheless, it's, uh, it's uh, let me say, it's uh, different different or it's difficult and incomplete knowledge, but they must learn it. Uh, yes, uh, sometimes you can guess, some, 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 Sometimes you can guess by guessing. What does it mean? You are listening to, uh, let me say, to uh, certain vocabulary that you know. From these vocabulary, you can, you can infer, you can conclude the meaning of the other words that you don't know. So, because you are listening to a, to a context rather than to, to single words. Okay. Yes. Giving the importance, yes, giving the importance of listening in language learning and teaching, it is essential. Okay, now, what is the role of teachers in listening skill? This is very important. Uh, it is essential for language teachers to help their students become effective listeners. Okay. How? In communicative approach to language teaching, this means modeling listening. Okay, if I say how, by modeling listening, what does it mean modeling listening? It means that giving them uh, samples, what does it mean? It means that uh, uh, making them listen more and more to audios. Audios would be what? The model, the sample giving them uh, mp3s for example uh, uh, audios uh, here what does it mean it means that uh, teachers should train students to make them listen more and more to the target language by giving them samples by giving them uh, uh, i mean uh, the the audio for the native speaker how in classroom activity, they are having dialogues. Dialogues should be what? Should be played on audio. The audio will train uh, uh, students to, to, to train what? Tra train their air to what? To listen to the native speaker. Okay, if it is not to be done at the first time, okay, we are going to rerun the, the audio. So training is the job of the teacher to make their students develop their listening ability clear now the role of the teacher so the role of the teacher is to train students to develop their listening ability by having models samples audio <clears throat> this means modeling listening strategies and providing listening practice you see in authentic situation. Why to say in authentic situation? That is, what to listen? Listen to dialogues, and dialogues having situations, okay? And these situations are taken from everyday life situations, okay? So here, we need just to make them trained to listen to the authentic material 
rather than to, to things that are related uh, to, to language that they are not going to use. Because here, when we are going to make them listen to the authentic material, we are training them to use these things in real situation. So here, the job of the teacher to train students to have models, and these models should be taken from everyday life situations. That is what? Authentic material. So they are going to listen to what? To what? To dialogues, conversations. <clears throat> Those that uh, uh, learners are likely to encounter when they use the language outside the classroom. So this is the aim. We uh, intend or aim to make students listen to the authentic uh, uh, audios to make them use these things outside the class. Teachers want to pro uh, produce students who, even if they do not have complete control of grammar, or an extensive lexicon can struggle for themselves in communication uh, situations. What does it mean here? What is the aim of the teacher? The aim of the teacher to make uh, students use the language. So here, we are not going to say to students, no, you are still beginners, you are not going to use language, no even if they don't have the control of the language. We need to train them to use language. This is the idea. It, 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 is, it is not just to say, no, wait, 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 till you have the full control, the full command of control, and then you are going to, no. Our aim as teachers to make uh, students use language even if they are beginners. In the case of listening, this means producing students who can uh, use listening strategies to maximize their comprehension of the oral in, uh, input. Identify relevant and non-relevant uh, information and tolerate less uh, than word-by-word -word comprehension. What does it mean? It means that we are going to say to students, okay, if you are not understanding word-by-word, -word, okay, uh, have the general idea of, of what you what you listen okay uh, uh, check your understanding of the uh, of the total meaning rather than just to concentrate word by word okay you listen to this situation what did you understand use the picture in in, in the dialogue to to make them identify uh, i mean the meaning rather than just to uh, to teach them word by word make them focus on their own understanding rather than to check uh, word by word. This is the idea. So the idea is just to make them uh, uh, develop their own understanding, comprehension, rather than to check their own word by word uh, 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 understanding. So if they are beginners, it's okay. They are not going to consider all the vocabulary that is to be said in the dialogue. But we are responsible to, to make them develop their understanding. What do you understand from this dialogue? Rather than just to say, what is the meaning of this expression which is used in this dialogue? Wh wh which, wh what, is, what is the uh, form of this uh, um, word which is used in the... No, we are not going to, to do it this way. We focus on understanding comprehension, make them develop their own comprehension rather than uh, focusing on uh, single words that are used in the audio or uh, let me say the material to be uh, done uh, orally. Up to this point, any question? Students? Yes, doctor, yes. Uh, you doctor, you, uh, what you said, what you said uh, uh, to make effective learners, this is one uh, of the aim of CLT. So CLT, are, uh, CLT teachers, Abdullah, yes. CLT teachers. The, uh, what, what I said is what is the role of, of the teacher to develop the listening uh, skill for students? First of all, to give them model, 
uh, the the model will be what the second one the uh, model should be what taken from everyday life situation that is authentic material and to focus on their own understanding rather than uh, teaching them single words or single vocabulary or each item in the audio uh, uh, material this is the idea so this is what what, what we and, call the role and of the CLT teacher to develop the, the listening uh, ability of students doctor in the CLT we have uh, yes. maximize comprehension or not yes yes we need we need to max what does it mean maximize uh, comprehension to make uh, comprehension to be more and more what does it mean it means that i i focus on uh, the level of understanding if the level is 20 percent you know 20 percent i need to make it 40 or 60 or 70 okay so it i i want us to develop it more and more to maximize it to make it more okay this is the idea now students what i want you just to check with me the book because we are going to cross out certain topics in the book and i'm going to say that it will be left so what i want you just to open your book and check with me and cross the pages cross the pages of course we reached at strategies for developing listening skills this is on page 20, uh, 52, sorry, 52. This page, cross it out. This will not be required. Page 52, cross it out. Page 53, cross it out. Victor, page, yes, yes, please. Not only pages, can you tell us the title? No, 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 no title because there, there are, uh, let me say, some mixing uh, uh, titles. I'm not concentrating the pages. I'm concentrating on the, uh, the uh, sorry, I'm not concentrating on the uh, titles because the, the titles will be mixed with the pages. You see now, for example, on page uh, 52, we have, we have the completion of the previous topic or pre previous title. And that's why I would say strategies for developing li listening uh, skills will be what will be crossed out this will include listening strategies okay uh, on on page uh, yes strategies for developing listening skills will be crossed out listening strategies okay page 53 crossed out page 54 crossed out uh, excuse me, Dr. Process, yes uh, our page yes. is by the way i'm going to do it both please listen i'm going to say the pages and then i'm going to say the titles that are not that are thank not required yes yes. yes 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 okay so from the beginning strategies for developing listening skills crossed out listening strategies crossed out Listening for meaning, cross out. Listening process, cross out. Page 55, cross out. Integrating metagognitive strategies, cross out. That is on page 56. Using authentic materials and situation, cross out. Two-way communication, cross out. Now I, I'm going to repeat the pages. I'm going to repeat the pages. Page 52, okay? Not all of it, only the, uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, the completion of the page, okay? And then page 53, page 54, page 55, page 56, page 57, till page 58, till page 58, 
we have the role of LC in communication. This is what be required. I'm going to explain it. So is it okay now or not? Just tell me. Is it okay now? Okay. Okay, doctor. Okay. Any problem with these things? These are not required. These are not required. So we are going to have the role of LC in communication. That is in the mid in the mid of page 58. The role of LC in communication. What do you mean by LC? LC means listening comprehension. This is abbreviation. <coughs> LC means listening comprehension. So what does it mean here? The role of listening comprehension in communication. What I need you now just to follow. Listening comprehension is the key initial step in communication. Underline this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, sentence or line and listen. Listening comprehension is a key initial step in communication. What does it mean? Here, the first step to communicate, to use language, is to, uh, to listen. I cannot begin learning how to speak without listening first. So what to say key initial? What to say key? That is what the first thing that I do. Initial, it means the starting point. The key, what does it mean? It means that it is something dependable. I need it. I cannot neglect it. Key. It is a key. C can I open the door without a key? What does it mean here? It means that I cannot understand uh, uh, how how can I speak without understanding how, wh what is said before. So the key initial or the uh, for communication is what is listening. The first thing that I'm going to do is to listen. The better a student can understand what is uh, what what is being said, the better will be the ability to communicate. Okay, if I'm going to be a good listener, I'm going to be a good speaker. So this is the relation, as we said at the beginning. A good listener means or equals a good speaker. I'm going to be a good speaker if I'm going to listen. But here. Do not do not uh, consider that uh, I'm going to be a, a listener all the time. No. As I said, each skill needs a training. If I want just to what uh, to 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 speak well, it doesn't mean that I'm going to listen all the time. No, I have to practice speaking as well. I have to develop a speaking skill as well. So to, I I develop listening skill and then I'm going to develop speaking skill. It doesn't mean that I'm going to listen all the time and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to speak. No. It means that each skill needs development. If I if I want just to what to speak well, I have to uh, develop my listening skill well and develop my listening uh, speaking uh, skill also. In addition, they will be better able to notice the characteristics of the target language, which will help improve their language development in the four key skill areas. So what does it mean here? It means that when we are talking about uh, uh, language skills, they are interrelated. Each skill adds to the other. They are interrelated and they are in one entity and they are helping uh, uh, one another. Uh, listening helps speaking, okay. And with 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 this, you have to know that again with reading and writing. Reading helps writing. So here uh, they are interrelated, and uh, and they are they are going in the uh, in the same area. Students may feel a great deal of pride 
when they are able to comprehend something in the target language. This is very important. Underline this. I want to just to consider the word pride. You know pride? The word pride? Yes. yes what does it mean here? What does it mean pride? I feel, I feel, uh, um, uh, uh, let me say, uh, uh, the way that I feel uh, confident, this is, when I say, uh, when I say pride, it doesn't mean that I, I, I'm going to show myself on others. It's not a matter of showing off. But I feel that I'm confident. What does it mean? It means that, well, I feel happy. I, uh, 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 well, uh, uh, I feel that I did something. I achieved something. You see now, you may, you may find somebody who say, well, well, uh, today I uh, talked with, with American, uh, for example, people, with American people. I, I chat with them. So uh, th this is some sort of what? Of achievement. He, uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, here the learner of a language feels, uh, uh, I mean, proud. Say, well, I did it. Just like this. What does it mean? It means that there is a sense of achievement. What does it mean, achievement? The learner feels that he is developing himself. He reached a point that he can uh, understand the native speaker. This is what we call pride. That is the, the, uh, feeling uh, happy because you achieve something. This is something psychological. You feel that you did something. That is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 let me say, an evidence of the development, of language development. You feel that you, 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 you develop yourself. And you feel happy because this is a, a sense of achievement. Why to say sense of achievement? Because uh, before that time, you cannot do it. It means that uh, you compare yourself, <coughs> you compare yourself, with with what what was uh, uh, your level and what is your level now? So it is a matter of comprehension. Yeah, yes, I did it. Now I did it. Uh, at the beginning, you need to do it, but you don't have the ability to. Get the point now. So the idea here, you feel pride because you feel, you have the you feel uh, sorry proud. You feel that you achieve something. This is a sense of achievement. Clear? Students? Yes, clear, Doctor. Yes, clear. <clears throat> this can be a great motivating factor. Okay, again, since we are talking about uh, uh, psychological factor, this is a motivator to do, to do something more. Say, yes, I did it now. Next time, I, I'm going to do something better. I'm going to say, uh, to, to have something which is more difficult than what I uh, what, what I did because this will will push you will push you ahead. It will be a great motiva motivator to do it. Okay, this is the idea. Uh, to learn language and teacher should uh, do whatever possible to promote this sense of accomplishment. Now, your role as a teacher, if you feel your students. Uh, reach this point and they feel happy when they when they did something okay okay uh, this will be uh, something helpful to you to the, to develop them because you see uh, learning needs motivation if students are motivated they are going ahead but if they are disappointed they are not going to develop them uh, themselves so what does it mean here this is a factor to you as a teacher if you, if you feel that your students have a sense of achievement, this is a good step to start. That is what, to develop them. But if you feel that they are disappointed, of course you cannot develop them because they are, uh, they are uh, let me say, not having the ability to, to develop themselves or they are not motivated to do it. So as a teacher, you have to make use of this factor this psychological factor. 
And teachers should uh, do whatever possible to promote the, the sense of accomplishment, accomplishment, achievement, the sense of accomplishment. That is, you achieve something. <clears throat> Consequently, teachers need to construct learning activities which will enhance learners oral comprehension, listening skills, and motivate them as well. Series of questions which teachers need to consider when preparing listening activities are presented below. What does this mean? The following questions that are related to you as a teacher. You are going to have a lesson tomorrow. You are going to have a lesson plan before. Today, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write what are the questions that I'm going to consider when I'm going to present an activity for listening tomorrow. As a teacher, how can I prepare myself? How can I prepare my students? Now, let us see what are these questions. What is the context of listening? You know the context? Yes, that is the, the situation. Uh, shall I present a dialogue? Shall I present, for example, a topic? A topic? Okay, so this is the first thing that I'm going to consider. What is the material to be given tomorrow? What is it? Then, should one or two items from the listening exercises be modeled for the whole class so that learners know what to do? So here, I have to decide how many items, how many audios that I'm going to make students listen. One or two, or how many? Okay, how many exercises? I mean, here are the exercises that are related even to the audio itself. And the audio itself as a, as a, a matter to what? To train uh, students to listen. How many? Two audios, three audios, one audio will be uh, enough for them. Because you know, it is related to, to their level. If they are beginners, they are not going to uh, comprehend three uh, uh, audios or four audios. One audio will be enough for them and to be repeated uh, more and more. So this is will be decided by you as a teacher because you are responsible for your students. You know, the, uh, you know them, you, you know their levels, and these are the guidelines for you. So you have to decide this first before doing the lesson. Let us see the other question. How many times should the item be here by students? And this is very important. This is related, again, to the level of students. Of course, if you are doing the listening uh, activity in the, uh, in the first, uh, at the beginning of the year, it will be different when you are in the mid of the year or at the end of the year. So this will be different. How many times it is related to their level, it is related to the... To, to, to your relationship with them. If they, are, if they are doing these things for the first time, of course, you are going to repeat the audio uh, many times. But if they are uh, familiar, you are going to do it twice or you are going to do it for one time. How, uh, how will learners check the accuracy of their listening? Okay, now the accuracy. Okay, students listen. How can, I, how can they check their understanding? Of course, from the questions that you are going to give, uh, give it to them. Okay, my students, did you listen uh, to, to these things? Okay, did you, did you understand? What, what, what did you understand? What, what, is, what is Sam is saying to Tom, for example? So the, the way that you check, the way that you are going to make them uh, feel that they understand or not. So you are going to decide uh, what are the questions that you are going to ask the, uh, your, your students after listening to the audio. They listen and then you are going to check. They want to check, by the way. They want to check because they want just to recognize if, if they are uh, understanding right or wrong or their understanding is okay or not. So you are going to what? To prepare questions to check their own understanding, the accuracy of understanding. By the way, these questions uh, uh, should be done by you next year when you are going to have 
teaching practice or application okay so uh, keep them with you because these things will will be very uh, useful to you when you are going to be a teacher is it possible to check listening accuracy to be done independently or collaboratively here when we are uh, when you are talking about uh, uh, things to be done uh, uh, independently or within other uh, uh, let me say uh, uh, activities do you want just to check uh, their understanding uh, within other activities just like for example speaking or grammar if you are going to do it or to make it independently which is not related to these other activities so this is related to you to, uh, to do it independently or not what are some tips to help the teachers develop a students listening skills tips you know tips uh, guidelines suggestions okay so what what are the suggestions that you are going to have we are going to discuss them uh, uh, in the following uh, paragraphs an effective teacher is aware that students are not always able to develop oral comprehension skills in their own without additional support listening by itself is not enough to develop uh, better listening skills what does it mean here uh, students in listening skill need some sort of gradation and these things are to be done with the help of teacher the teacher should help the students to develop their own uh, uh, abilities and these things should uh, should be uh, uh, done by the support of the teacher what, what 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 are these things we are going to see here are several activities a teacher can employ to facilitate the development of listening skill. These are very important. If I ask you an exam, what are the activities that are to be done by the teacher to employ, or, or, okay, to, uh, to, to be employed by the teacher to facilitate, to help uh, students to develop their own listening skill? Let us see what are. Promote active listening. How? giving the students something to listen for for ensures that uh, they are involved in the task exercise sheets are another tool the, that promote active listening what does it mean here when you are going to uh, uh, have a listening activity uh, what, what to say active listening what does it mean active listening it means that it is happening the moment that you are going to uh, uh, develop their own listening uh, uh, skill. That is, uh, prepare them for uh, the activity. Say, well, students, we are going to listen to, to a dialogue uh, uh, that, you, uh, that you have in the book. Look at the textbook. This, this dialogue, we are going to listen, and this will make them ready to create readiness. That is, they are having a, a text, and this this text will be uh, will be uh, ha having uh, some sort of preparation on the part of students. Students will be ready to what to to the activity to get them ready for the activity. Make them feel that there is a task to be done. You know, task. Identify listening strategies. Give the students tools to guide their listening, such as looking for a specific information. Okay, to relate the audio with the textbook. What does it mean? Look at this picture, or look at this expression, which is found in the in the book. Identifying the predictable words or phrases, or discussing what they expect in certain forms of speech, such as a newscast or adver advertisement. Selecting the most appropriate strategies for presenting the lesson. For example, using uh, top-down general meaning, you may ask them just to have, okay, when they finish listening, what is, what, what is, the, uh, what is the situation? You may ask them, what is going on? Just like this. Or uh, cognate uh, specific words or uh, word order patterns. That is what you have to decide. 
do you focus on certain expressions that are found in the dialogue or you you need just to make them having the general idea of the of the dialogue itself use authentic material as we said earlier for example a lecture or an audio announcement in the target language to help students become accustomed to different accents you know when we talk about accents and to a realistic realistic pace of speech ensure uh, the students know the goals of the listening task that is what is the aim of listening uh, 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 activity okay what is the aim of uh, uh, lesson one what is the aim of this lesson that is presented okay the goal to understand what is being said to decide whether to keep listening or to obtain a specific information okay is it the aim just to know the meaning or the topic or we have certain things that are related to grammar to vocabulary so th these are to be decided by you as a teacher provide opportunities for reflection and discussion so that the students can share what uh, was here what was learned and the methods they uh, uh, employ to better understand what uh, was said of course after the listening activity make the, make the students discuss make them okay ask them uh, to 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 be to be in groups and to what uh, to discuss what is what, what is what is to be heard and what is what what is to be understood make them negotiate what what do what do they have and to uh, to discover their variation in the way that they they understand okay make them make them check their own understanding by having several questions and make them discuss them make them uh, uh, i mean having the discussion among themselves okay for example student a student b are saying well i understood so and so say no I, what i what i understood is something different you miss something it's just like this so make them discuss what, what they understood make them discuss the strategies when they say well one student is saying well i uh, understanding i i understand this uh, for example uh, uh, topic depending on the meaning the other is saying well depending on the grammar just like this uh, see what what kind of strategies that they follow organize a pre-listening activities such as providing students with relevant vocabulary reading related text looking at uh, uh, related image or clarifying necessary cultural information okay so when you are going to uh, having a, a listening uh, activity uh, use charts pictures okay make them uh, uh, having uh, uh, let me say some sort of relation with the with the, uh, the audio and so these these preparation for example charts pictures that are put not in the textbook yeah, on the board okay to make them or writing the important vocabulary which is far which is used in the in the audio itself be sure to check the level of listening exercise beforehand what does it mean applying to ensure it is appropriate level of the students so here when you choose the your your uh, i mean um, uh, audio or let me say listening uh, task make it appropriate to their level do not do, do, do not consider them as advanced if they are uh, beginners choose what is appropriate to their level with this we finalize with uh, chapter eight with the with the with the important points that we raise the points that we raise are required other things that are left any question so far any question any question students no okay with this if you don't have any question we say that we are going to finalize our lecture this is one second today we are going to have 20 students to discuss their own reports okay so what we need is just to have the uh, i mean the attendance of only the 20 students only this is one second we need just to say that we are following alphabetic arrangement you have to consider that
Is it okay now? Okay, Doctor. Okay, thanks a lot.